previously on Drag Duel. Our 12 contestants entered a legendary battle for $2,500 and the glory of becoming the champion of Drag Duel. They sized each other up before competing in their first side quest, a date with Derek. Over 600 audience votes led to Hydra winning the very first side quest of the season, and they continued on to their first main battle challenge. The contestants were tasked with creating a talent show performance and showing off their signature style on the runway. Ultimately, the judges had already decided that nobody would be going home, leaving Trisha Can, Callie Coquette, and Bobby Uranus safe to continue in the competition. Instead of an elimination, Titanic Donovan and Shinidza Woman lip-synced in a drag duel for the win. With Shinidza claiming the first win of the season and the $100 prize that goes with it. What battles are looming for our 12 drag warriors? And who will be the very first warrior eliminated from the drag duel? Welcome back to Drag Duel. My name is Derek, aka the Drag Detective. And my name is the Fat Bootsy. And welcome to the new episode of the Drag Duel your new favorite online drag competition where the winner will walk away with the amazing $2,500 cash prize courtesy of the Drag Detective. We would also like to announce that thank you to our very, very generous patrons and one in particular who chose to remain nameless, but who we still very much appreciate. We now will have a $500 runner up prize as well as a $250 Mix Congeniality prize. And also a $75 Lash package from Lash Core. Our drag warriors have survived the first challenge they have been judged by us, the audience, and their competitors. And the dynamics are changing. The alliances are forming, people are butting heads, and there's a lot of things happening behind the stage. So let's catch up with the warriors and see what they have been up to. I thought I was gonna be in the top, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I did a really good job. I literally set myself on fire, like, how can I not be in the top when I found out I was literally like screaming, crying, throwing up. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm so happy. I'm literally so happy. It's been like really crazy the amount of like messages I've gotten, the followers I've gotten. I'm like a little bit head in the clouds. Like it's really lovely. I'm like so happy about it. I was really unsurprised that Shanita won. Honestly, I was telling her the whole time and then I was like, I should probably stop telling her just in case she doesn't. There's not a lot to complain about with top two, but I smashed the glass for that lip sync. It's broken. I want to win. So last week is last week. This week, I'm going to play to win and not a top two placement because there will be none. There will be a bottom two placement and I won't have it. She needs to surprise me that she won because I didn't expect that. She needs a new wardrobe, but Shinidza did very, very well. She did give us exactly what we were hoping for. If Shinidza somehow loses internet connection and cannot access AliExpress, I kind of fear for her runways because up to now, I have seen almost every single piece she's worn on about three to five local drag queens in my own scene. Thank God for South Korean internet speeds because otherwise, uh, I don't know what Shinidza would be wearing. Like, going by the runway being 40%, I just don't think someone who's just wearing costumes out of the bag without any customization or any, like, personal touches should be rewarded for that. I think she's a great performer from everything you've seen on Instagram, and I thought her talent was the best, but I just really dislike the runway. I think Hydra is a little bit nasty and not in a cute way. I can't stand that bitch. <laughs> She's hella rude. She's so rude. I think that Hydra was really salty that she didn't win or get into the top last week. She was definitely salty that Shinita was up there and she wasn't. And immediately after we found out the results, she comes into the chat and says, oh, I wouldn't have put Shanita in the top. Hydra was the only person to say straight up, 
you didn't deserve to win you didn't deserve to be in the top you should have been safe your looks at aliexpress and like that was that gagged me to be honest i was like okay i was feeling like here and then i was feeling like here after those comments so yeah can't, can't stand her why would you take a moment away from someone who's obviously proud of themselves and excited and come in there and say i wouldn't have put her in the top and also i would have put tylenol in the bottom i'm like girl thank god you're not judging because you obviously have no taste i'm actually kind of still pissed off about it because I really really liked Hydra and I was rooting for her. I was literally team Hydra and then she came in and tried to burst Shanita's bubble. I'm gonna fight a bitch for my girl, okay? I will fight these bitches. You can say whatever you want about me but do not talk shit about Shanita woman, okay? She is an icon, she is a star, she is mother, she is everything and you will never be, okay? Hydra, that's on period, bitch. If she needs AliExpress, AliExpress looks. <laughs> I hope she wears another one. <laughs> I hope that's a deep. I, I want every week to talk about her AliExpress looks. <laughs> so my placement last week was, I mean, expected, unexpected, I don't know. I just really didn't know how it was gonna go over. I thought it was funny. I still kind of stand by it. It seemed like it was not thought out, like watching it, but I put a lot of thought into it. So I'm like, oh, I wish I would have read a little more. Trisha disappointed me. I, I had high expectations for the Chicago girlies. They're well known in the circuit. They're well known in the online world. And both of them gave milk toast performances, uh, water cup performances, I suppose. Why do something that you've seen go wrong elsewhere? It kind of just seems, um, I don't know, I'm not gonna say disrespectful, but it seemed a bit diminishing of the competition as a whole to go into the first week and just not try. And if that was her trying, then it's a little bit surprising. I'm surprised Trisha can't. I feel really good about what I did. I feel like I did a solid performance and I wasn't in the bottom, so I'm happy for that. Hearing Trisha in the bottom was like initially a shock, but then I could see how torn up she seemed about it. She was just not super confident. And I was, of course I'm her biggest fan. So I'm like, what do you mean queen icon? I love you, you can do nothing wrong. And her runway was so good. Like you cannot deny her talent. I just feel like sometimes the things you want to do might just not come across as well as you had hoped. And I'm just excited to see what she does from now on. I was looking gagged <laughs> when I saw Trisha's talent. Cause I was like, mama, this is garbage. <laughs> when I heard that Trisha's talent was ice water, I kind of giggled because I was like, okay, I don't know. Maybe she can make this funny, like that's whatever. But <laughs> my hopes were not high. Neither was her talent show. I came into this and saw Trisha and thought she is the one to beat. Like she is going to slay everything in this competition. She's gorgeous, she's goofy. She has the looks, she makes them herself. And then to see her fail <laughs> so miserably, <laughs> there's a little part of me that was like, yes. <laughs> it was a good week. A lot of people did cool things. I will say the only placement I disagree with is I think Rosa and Glass actually should have been swapped because Rosa's is like not one take. I don't know, I, it was sketchy. And the editing was sketch. After sitting on my placement last week, I kind of feel the same, <laughs> especially watching the episode back. I definitely think that, oh my God, my delusional edit is coming. I definitely do think that I probably should have at least been in the top. I mean, winning maybe, but I definitely think I should have been in the top. I know I'm also not the only one like feeling this way because I've had actually some of the contestants be like, bitch, you were robbed. Chubbs, please. Chubbs, honey, it's time to be quiet, okay? He thinks you were robbed too. No, thank you, yeah, thanks Chubbs. <laughs> I was really, really surprised by Glasses safe. I was surprised by Trisha's bottom. Christie's safe also. I thought they would do a bunch more better than they did. But then when I watched the talents, I was like, okay, it makes perfect sense. Everybody is where they should be. <laughs> no rigory afoot. Now that I came from being low, I'm like, 
I really cannot be there again. It's not something I want to be there again. This week, I definitely took some of those critiques and I feel like I added it into my challenge this week, specifically to make myself stand out. I'm like, last week I wasn't trying to necessarily be funny. So this week I like wanted to like try to show a little more humor. I am disappointed in myself. I mean, I think my singing went well. That's the thing that I am the most self-conscious about. I'm, I mean, so grateful that I had another chance. The sigh of relief. And like, I knew I had to set my fucking ass up, my dick OC up. <laughs> One of the things about my drag is that like, like last week, Trisha said, like, it seems like I'm early in my drag career. I've been doing drag for six years. It's just that I've been in college and dealing with COVID and just a lot of things in life. Like, I've been doing drag for six years, but not consistently. And so I don't have as many connections and resources as some of these other people do. So here's the thing. First round of confessionals, everyone had a lot to say about me. I was in my feelings for a moment and I didn't want to stay in my feelings because I don't think that's very fun. I'm gonna let bygones be bygones, but the only thing I have to say to that is don't do that to my goddamn brand ever, ever again. Now every bitch is gonna look at me like I'm fucking ugly. They're gonna look for ugly in me and I'm fucking beautiful. How dare you? I really, really underestimated Susan, but after her talent, after her runway, like she's so funny. She's like a really funny bitch and I think she's gonna be big competition than I expected her to be. I cannot get party mouth out of my head. <laughs> There'll be random points in the day where I'm just like, suck me in your party mouth. <laughs> I like, I can't wait for it to drop on Spotify because I'm going to stream the shit out of it. Nobody was understating Susan, but I thought she was the funniest bitch there because our comedy definitely aligns. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, I get this bitch. And now that everyone else is living, I'm kind of like, I told you so, this bitch is, I'm sorry. I am a Susan Stan. I didn't want to attract too much attention the first round because I knew that I don't want to risk going home. So I played down my psychosis in the confessionals and attracted no attention. Thank God, now I can be unhinged and a little monster. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to do what I want to do and you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. I just want to clear up some confusion from episode one. Me and Susan never dated. I'm putting that on the record. Bobby, who by the way, decided to out a relationship that I'm was never in. <laughs> we did not date. Okay, that's it. end of conversation. <laughs> Bobby created a group chat with me and Susan in it and was basically like, hey, you guys are like super close to me. We should like hang out and go like fabric shopping and hang out. And it was just me and Susan. And like Bobby had no idea. Like I do not blame Bobby at all. It was hilarious in the moment. I was like, oh my God. Like this poor child has no idea like the door that he has just opened. I, I unblocked glass, but we haven't spoken. I was very confused in the group chat because a lot of times in drag when you're talking about like, doing drag with people, you just call it going out. And so so Glass had said in the chat, oh, Susan and I used to go out, then the big split happened. So my mind was like, oh, they had a messy breakup. They never dated. <laughs> to go into more depth about like me and Susan's past relationship, Susan was at a certain point in time, almost like a drag mom-ish figure to me. I think that Susan kind of, in ways introduced me to more of like the local scene. I, I've just continued to talk to Bobby after the group chat kind of died, but Bobby and I are like five minutes away from each other. I, I've seen more of Bobby than I have of my own mother. Oh, because she's dead. <laughs> so the vibe of this cast is definitely 
It's definitely Drag Duel's best friend race. Bestie, Kumbaya Slay. Like, oh my God, we all did so good. Like, y'all don't look at the comments, like whatever. But I know it's not gonna stay that way for long because I know these bitches are shady. It's not, I'm not like, oh, I hope it stays this way forever. No, I know, I know these bitches are capable of a fight, as am I. And so, I don't know. I'm just waiting for something to unfold. I'm hoping for a fight. I'm hoping for um, a, a live divorce. Is anyone married? <laughs> so the group is a little bit weird. For a while after the first round of confessionals, everyone was silent. And I was being passive aggressive because it's so fun. Ooh. Sasha Colby. Things seem to have chilled out now, but there is this air of terror amongst these geese. Yes, be afraid. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> I just love the chaos of it. Clap, 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 clap. The relationships are forming and bubbling and things are getting very interesting. But now it is time for our second side quest of the season. In this side quest, our drag warriors were tasked with taking nothing other than bed sheets to create a drag look. But to make it even more difficult, they were not allowed to rip, sew, or manipulate the bed sheets in any fashion other than just putting it on their bodies. So now let's go take a look at how the side quest went for our contestants. So this week we had a side quest again, this time not with Beric, thank god. This time we were doing it by ourselves and we were using a bedsheet to make bedsheet couture. I was also doing 15 minutes quick drag. I looked stunning. Nobody could tell me I didn't slay my makeup. I think my bedsheet runway couture looked great. I think it looked a little bit like Suzanne's runway from the first week, but still better. I picked a really small bed sheet. That was my main issue. And I wore a corset and really big heels, so I couldn't cover any of myself in it. And in the end, I decided to wrap half, half of the bed sheet around my head, so I had even less material to work with. So in the end, I was half naked and like my tights were falling out and I didn't wear panties, so it was like, um, I'm not winning this week, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay, y'all, excuse the messy damn house, but we are about to make an outfit out of a bed sheet. Um, do I know what I'm gonna do? No, but is that gonna stop me? I don't think so. Here's the bed sheet in question. The side quest for this week is actually so fun. This is something I've like thought about doing for a minute because I feel like I see like all these like crazy DIY, oh, DIY tutorials and like random, like five minute crafts. I'm looking obsessed with their videos because they're all so bad and so egregious. So I was like, let's try this. This could be fun in camp. I literally like washed my bed sheet off of my own bed, not the fitted one because we had to fit it to myself. I was like, you know what? Let's just try to give like 90s supermodel, like, can I say conscious? Conscious? If Liza Minnelli was a supermodel in the 90s and wore a bed sheet to a red carpet. <laughs> somebody who sews, it's like, no, because there's not much you can do to stand out without wearing just a toga. So I kind of tried to make my toga a little special. <laughs> I should name her. I should. This is my panic room. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this, but we're going to, we're going to have some fun. Hopefully. I was thinking of possibly using a fitted sheet and trying to take advantage of the floofiness. I'm also hoping I can make something on the mannequin that I could take off the mannequin and then put on me. Oh, I like that fluff. I like that fluff. I think that's something I can run with. Why does this look like Christie's uh, promo look? <laughs> no shade, no shade. So I don't have a lot of experience with draping. I have a lot more experience with flat patterning. I haven't been filming this whole time. But we are going with a high elf Lord of the Rings fantasy. I can't believe that Return of the King is older than some people on this cast. 
That is fucking wild. I'm glad that my elven Legolas fantasy was able to make its way through. Last year, I started working at the Ren Fair right out of college. So I actually had to drop the Ren Fair this year in order to work on the competition, which was really sad for me. The overall feeling at the Ren Fair is that like, it's like sleepaway camp for adults and it is the most supportive space ever. I mean, you know, drag drag is one thing. And, and I guess because I've had some like not great experiences with my last drag family that I ended up leaving. It really was a supportive place to be. And so having this be my first job and having everyone be very supportive and everyone's joking around and, um, you know, everyone's a huge nerd doing Shakespeare and sword fighting. And it's a lot, but it's having this feeling of having them having your back is so amazing, especially um, last year during the fair, my abuser uh, showed up and I was freaking the fuck out and just the the people at the fair that were understanding and came and gave me a shoulder to cry on and like hunted this guy down, make sure that he didn't stay near me. It was really an amazing feeling. Or she goes and and what and what about it it's fun i don't care <laughs> another side quest in the books and to find out the winner of this side quest it is all up to you the viewer in the description below there will be a google doc where you will be able to vote for who you think deserves to win this side quest 
The winner will be announced next episode, and the winner will receive a whopping grand prize of $25. So make your voices heard. We had 600 votes last time. Let's see if we can get that even higher for this episode. So make sure you vote now. And now I will send you back over to Butsi, where she will tell you all about our main battle for this round. For the round two main battle, our competitors had to go to the audition boot camp. That is right, they had to create a parody of an audition video, the same one that landed them right here in this competition. They had to develop their own unique character, and with that character, do an interview portion, a talent portion with two distinct talents, a look portion with two runway looks. This is a comedy and acting challenge, and the judges were looking for a well thought out character and jokes throughout the video. And on the runway, the category is cultural couture. We want to see a look that is personal and meaningful to our warriors because we want to learn more about their background. Thus, I am dressed as a McDonald's worker because that is my culture, fat ass culture. So our challenge this week is to make parody audition tapes for Drag Duel. And the route that I decided to go with was to pull out my king persona and audition as him. And the shtick that I'm going with is that I am still secretly Cali Coquette the whole time. And this is my way of weaseling my way into the show because I already auditioned a bunch of times and I didn't get accepted. So now I'm trying out as a king. I personally think it's really funny. I'm really proud of what I did this week. And you know what? Anything from last week after that is a step up. But I think what I do excel at is making a fool of myself. And I think I did that very well. I was especially excited that it was a comedy challenge because I think I'm really funny, but also I'm delusional. So, you know, you never know. Also, not only is it a comedy challenge, but it's also an editing challenge, essentially. You're editing your audition tape. I feel like I am a fantastic, funny editor. So I was really confident going into this because I've made many uh, audition tape and they're all good. Not to toot my own horn, but toot toot bitch, they're all good. Yeah, I was actually kind of pretty confident. Watch me get eliminated, that'd be so funny. <laughs> all bit is such a cutie. I'm a little bit obsessed with Albit. I think she hasn't shown a lot yet. Uh, I think her talent show wasn't the best it was, it was safe and that was safe. Orbit has beautiful makeup. Orbit is Gen Z. And I hope we see more from Orbit because at this point in the competition, I see like a TikTok makeup girly and I think there's more to Orbit, but uh, she's not really doing much to push outside of that. So for my runway, when I saw the prompt, I knew immediately that like, obviously I need to do a Danae look, a D Navajo for all you basics out there, but I, I need to do a Danae look. And I swear to God, if I hear a Navajo pun, I swear to God, if I hear that I am a Navajo, I'm going to throttle someone through the screen. Then I wanted to go to MMIW because I've, I've always wanted to do a look that makes that kind of statement. I really wanted to get that across. And so I knew I wanted to do something with the red hand prints. So the red handprints, they're essentially a, a symbol of MMIWP, which is missing murdered indigenous women. And usually the red handprint is painted over the mouth. It's not only a, an aggressive and violent tactic, but it is also a silencing one. Missing murdered indigenous women, not to, not to be grim and dark, but like we're taken for our bodies. And so I wanted that to come across just naked red handprints over me. I wanted to include Navajo concho belts and squash blossoms and turquoise and feathers and whatever. But I knew I couldn't do too much because I also am doing something serious and I really wanted it to also be raw. I wanted it to be good, but also serious and send a message because usually my drag is not that serious, but I wanted it to be serious now. I like to say that I have a 12 ply ostrich boa idea and concept, but probably like a one ply chicken feather budget. 
Oh my god, I'm taking a risk because literally, girl, literally, let me show you the quantity that is this outfit. That's it. This is the outfit. That's it. Just me and the bestie. I hate her. Yeah, I'm Acid Betty and this is Michelle Visage and I punched her in her left tit. I was going to get in drag today, but my body said, you aren't getting in drag today. You are far too tired. I can barely hold this phone up. It is so very heavy. Turn, pause. So I have hemochromatosis. That is an iron processing disorder, which means my body is accumulating iron without letting it go. Because my body does that, it settles in my joints, and a lot of my symptoms are just general aches, pains, a lot of fatigue. I was big overthinking the runway, and I kept thinking, I have, an, I have no connection to my culture. My mother was adopted, I never knew my father. Everything I would be doing is just based off of like vague guesses. Like one time on TikTok, someone said I look Russian as fuck. I don't know what that means. But I eventually realized because I was in pain that, oh yeah, this is something that is a unique experience to me. Is this a culture? And then I remembered all the people that kind of guided me throughout symptom management and how to navigate doctors and medical bills. And I think it's important that I represent that. And I think it's important that I show something serious, something genuinely human. I think it's easy to see me as just a very funny person all the time. Ha ha, he he hoo hoo. But the comedy comes from a great deal of trauma. So every time someone says a joke, ask them how's their relationship with their father going? But Bobby's coming over, I'm going to help them film their, sorry, that's my hand, that's my hand. I'm gonna help them film their skit. I don't wanna sound cocky, but I am confident that what I'm going to do is going to be funny. It is not cocky, it is self-assurance. What I do is comedy and I know how to do it well. I love the gays and the gays are, begging to be entertained. I'm not gonna let them down. Hashtag Team Susan. Last week definitely was not my best work, but it's a new week, new challenge. We have more time this week, which I think was a major struggle with last uh, the last challenge. And Susan's gonna help me film my runway. She lives pretty close by. Um, and so I'm very excited about that. Having to film yourself when you are in layers of makeup and layers of clothing uh, is aggravating. <laughs> she also has a really good setup. Um, but for the meantime, I am bedazzling this bodysuit for my runway. I feel a lot more confident about this challenge. It's interesting because before we even started filming, I felt very confident about week one and a bit nervous about week two. Now it's the opposite. I think I've seen what happens when I let things slip through. I'm not gonna let that happen anymore. I just started Wellbutrin, so my brain is as smooth as a potted plant. Bobby and I met up. I filmed Bobby's audition. And I gotta say, I am not an easy director. So Bobby delivered. I'm over the moon. I do not direct easy. I consider myself the Stanley Kubrick of drag because I'm just awful. But Bobby put up with it and did a great job. I look like a like a Disney, like a whitewashed Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> You're Al. I'm Al. Susan let me borrow this corset, and I could tell that she's fallen it in a bunch because all of these gems are shattered on the inside. <laughs> I'm allergic to gravity. Look, oh, I'm so sad. Aww. Oh, so sad. Everyone was mean to everyone was mean to me in the first episode. Mm. Stop bullying Susan. Then we got girl dinner. It was cool. One thing that was really nice was being able to bounce my th things off of Susan. I was worried that it was gonna end up becoming her script, but it was probably except for one joke and that like one like improvised bit. Like it was all me. And hearing Susan's husband laughing from the other room made me feel very confident. That's my son! That's my boy! At this point, Bobby and I have a better alliance than Shanidza and Tyler. 
because we're going to be in the competition for a while. So this week's main quest was the audition bootcamp, and we had to do a comedic audition with invented characters for Drag Duel, but I struggled to find like a character that would work for me because uh, I didn't want my accent to like poke through if I did like an American character or something. So I was trying to find something that I can fit to myself. I'm someone who's always insecure, but I take that as a strength because I always think about everything and I'm never like, like glass, oh, I'm gonna win this and then end up in the safe, possibly bottom place. My issue with my accent is when I hear someone else with an accent, I don't find it at all. But when I watch my videos back, I feel like uh, if I hear an accent, I feel like I'm gonna st sound stupid. And I hate that I think that way because I like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, so it's trying to find a character that had an, a different accent so I could like mask my own. I wanted to like play on Russian stereotypes and have like a really cute old grandma have like really dark and twisted things coming out of her mouth. So I'm excited for everyone to see what I did. I'm probably gonna be low safe for this challenge, I'm not sure. I'm not known as a comedy queen. That's the thing I do the least. I have like a pretty bad relationship with my culture. I know that because I always wanted to move out because Serbia is really not great for gay people. I think it's not really great for any people. It's a really poor country. We are politically horrible. It's very corrupt. The thing is, when you move out as an immigrant who is Serbian, you're most of the time only going to have opportunities as like labor or manual workforce. That is something I've always been very unhappy about. Another reason why I see like my culture and all of that and my accent uh, as a negative and something I'm not proud of, but something that like holds me back. Uh, everyone here gets shocked when they hear I don't listen to any like Serbian music. And I always had that avoidance of anything Serbian because I always felt like uh, Serbia is against me and doesn't want me because I'm gay. So like I don't want it. I always wanted to immigrate as soon as I can. And I didn't want to get attached to anything here because uh, I had a lot of bad feelings connected to Serbian culture. People use the culture against me doesn't mean that I don't get to celebrate the culture myself. So it's it's an unhealthy relationship and it's not something I'm proud of. I think it's unhealthy that I try to distance myself from my culture so much. I'm working on it. I'm like, I feel so out of it. <laughs> Do you see this? I literally just spilled tea. You better spill that tea, bitch. You better spill that tea, sis. I think my approach to this episode is definitely a lot different from episode one. Um, episode one, I just wanted to more show off a talent that I don't normally show off and then serve one of my iconic looks. But this, I feel like, is when we're getting into the thick of it. And this is where I have to really start, like, showing my creativity, showing my, I guess, just versatility as, like, a drag artist and the way I produce content as well. I didn't want to just give like the same thing over and over again. Christy Da Vinci disappointed me a bit with her talent. Like I expected her to do better, but she's pretty standoffish. She isn't really involved and I didn't enjoy her uh, interview where she was like, uh, everyone should be scared of me. I'm so amazing. I mean, look at the material. Competition? I don't see her. <laughs> Right now, I'm honestly feeling really good about what I did this week. I'm so proud of my challenge. I'm so proud of my runway. I was, I mean, honestly, I was really stumped at an idea for this week. I had like a couple ideas swirling around in my brain, but nothing really was like connecting with me. So I felt like, well, let me do something that I know I have like the ability to do comedically, something I feel like I could pull off, something that I also feel would like be funny and entertaining to watch. Um, so this week, I'm doing my audition reel as basically the final girl from all of your favorite horror movies. She has survived and thrived all the way to hopefully drag duel if they cast her. It was nice to feel like, okay, once I have my character selected, I have an angle, I could just go in and be goofy. Um, yo <laughs> I could actually do a really good goofy impression. Like, scary. Okay, we have to do it now. Yeah! Gorge. 
So for this week's runway, it was really a no-brainer for what I was going to do. I'm Mi'kmaq, I'm Native American, I'm Indigenous, and out of one of two Indigenous girls in this cast, I feel like we really just got to show out, and I think we really both did that. If you got a Mi'kmaq Barbie out of the box, that's what I wanted it to look like. I get to pay tribute to my favorite thing, which is Indigenous women. Indigenous women face so much violence and not a lot of conversation about it. So often we're just not a part of the conversation at all, if there even is a conversation happening at all. This country has a long history and we all know. I feel like bringing any sort of attention to issues like this is incredibly important, especially things like murder and missing indigenous women, land back, the fact that now climate problems are becoming more and more insurmountable and it's going to be indigenous people that are facing the brunt of a lot of this. And this look I made myself, it's kind of like a tribute on some traditional regalia, but also more of like in a modern, more fashioned way. Um, I made my own fancy shawl. Um, it has a Mi'kmaq star on the back, which is like a symbol for my tribe. And I feel like this is especially a love letter to all the indigenous women in my family who helped raise me, who never made me feel othered by presenting as whoever I wanted to be or whoever I was. This is about to be a buffet of comedy and I cannot wait to eat it all up. I feel like I'm especially excited to see what Susan's gonna do. Um, I know that she's a comedy girl, so I feel like there's high expectations of her. I'm also really excited for everyone to see Trisha's. I think hers is so funny. It does definitely help to have someone there with you. I feel like if I didn't have Trisha to be able to help me film, I'm like, if I had to do it all myself, which I almost had to last night, it would have been rough. It's just like, nice to have someone in your house that can understand exactly what you're going through. So coming up with my character, well, I ended up going with <laughs> the person abducted by aliens. I realized that maybe I was a little too confident going into it necessarily. I maybe didn't realize how much I'm going to need to try and I definitely am starting to put that effort into these weeks and making sure that I'm standing out for the details instead of being low for not seeming like I care because I do care. For the runway this week, I was really excited because the category is cultural couture, which is very much anyone can take any way that they want to. I'm sad because I happen to be adopted as well as like not a ton of like, I know some of like my background and stuff like that, but I don't know a ton, but like, I know I'm black. <laughs> I wanted to just pay it like a modern day tribute to like a beautiful, strong African woman and African prince with their beautiful like, headdresses that are usually ginormous and like I just really wanted to pay tribute to all that. I really didn't get to express a lot of my culture until I started doing drag. Growing up as a kid my parents usually just like cut my hair really short. This is the longest my hair has ever been. Growing up I, I'm from Michigan originally and I happened to go to a school that was more like out in like farmland so I was not surrounded by a ton of black people and it wasn't always like easy to express culture without immediately being profiled it's just it's just nice now as an adult to be able to have an art form that lets me express a lot of the things i didn't get to express as a kid i am uh, just praying after last week to just not be in the bottom i believe i could be a possible high placement if the judges really liked it I also could see them not getting some of it and be like, okay, you're safe, or maybe low. I know, I know I cannot be in the bottom two with what I presented though. felt a great deal of pressure from this challenge. Everyone kind of pegged me as the comedy queen and I never once said that I was funny. You said it. So there's this expectation that, oh, the gays are looking for Susan. And I'm just like, no gays, stop. You can't. I just hope I deliver, I was, uh, I, I did what I think is funny, but a lot of people don't think what I think, uh, well, people don't like what I like. I was extremely anxious about the main challenge. 
I'm anxious about everything. I overthought my characters. I had about 40 different characters. I was going to be Casey Anthony for one, but then I thought it might be in bad taste. I thought I felt totally fine with what I submitted. I submitted it. I showed it to a friend of mine who I view as the funniest person I know, and they said, it's fine. And in an instant, like, shattered. I nearly filmed an entire other video on the day of submissions. I don't know what I was going to do, but I was ready to do it, so I'm eliminated. That is all we have for this episode of Drag Duel. Be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube so you don't miss any new episodes, especially next week where our contestants will give you the most hilarious audition tapes you've ever seen and then strut that runway in a look that means a lot for them. And also, one of them will be going home. This time for real. The first elimination is happening next week. Also, check out our Patreon. That is the best way to support ourselves and our competitors. We have extra lip syncs, footage not shown in the episodes, full unedited confessionals, as well as watch parties with us, the hosts, where you get to watch the episodes an entire day early. We have so much, we don't even know what to do with all of it on our Patreon, so check it out now. Also linked in the description below. We will also be joined by our extra special guest judges, Jack Fed from YouTube and season 14 contestant, Cornbread. Yes, Cornbread will be joining us to judge these warriors. Also a little side tea, if you are a drag performer who may be interested to participate in season two, well, there is a doc right in the description that you can fill out to show us your interest. The official casting still hasn't started, but we want to know who is interested to join Drag Duo. That is it for this week. You guys can go back doing whatever you were doing. I'm just gonna go back to being fat. <laughs>